I welcome everybody to our IIC Ministries Youth Meeting, which stands for Edify, Unify, and Fortify. On October 21st in Santa Fe, Mexico, during the making of a movie called Rust, the director of photography, also known as a cinematographer, Hylina Hutchins, was killed, and director Joel Souza was injured. This happened when actor Alec Baldwin fired a gun in their direction. Hylina Hutchins' job as a cinematographer was really the look of the shots that you see from the camera when you're watching any movie, as well as the lighting of those shots or scenes. Sousa's job, he's a director. So the director of any film guides everybody, like the actors in the film crew, in the making of the film and bringing the entire vision of the story to the screen. The Sheriff's Department, Santa Fe, Mexico, said that everyone on the set of the film called Rust, the making of the film called Rust, is under investigation. The director, Joel Souza, was shot in the shoulder. There was a weapons expert hired to work on the film. Her name was Hannah Gutierrez Reed. And it's Hannah's job, it's that person's job to make sure that guns are used safely and effectively for the success of the film. Hannah handed the gun to David Holt, who is the assistant director. David Holt handed the gun to Alec Baldwin, who was the main actor, and told him that it was safe to fire this gun. Hannah is the weapons expert responsible for the safety of everyone, the crew and the actors, and also for the success of the film in using this type of prop. Whose fault do you think it was that this gun was fired, killing one person and injuring another? I believe it's clearly Anna's fault right here because she's the one that's responsible for, you know, keeping things in check, make sure there's no shot, it's okay to, you know, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, she should be blamed. Mm-hmm. She didn't, she didn't I, do her job. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good point. You know what I think? We They fail the safety check miserably. And I think when you're dealing with firearms, props, fake or whatever, I think, especially when you're using blanks and live ammunition, why they have live ammunition, I'm not sure. But I would think that each hand would look inside the gun, and I guess it was a revolver, Colt 45, and yeah. try to determine, if you know what it looks like, that this gun is safe to be used. Either no ammo in it, or you have the blanks in it. When I'm saying blanks, um, the head of the bullet is different, or the, the casing, I guess. So if each person checked before that gun was fired or misfired or whatever, I think we could have avoided a tragedy from hand to hand. And the other thing I think, because I would think that you don't want live, I don't know if there's a law or policy, live ammunition on a set. What are you going to use live ammunition for? Yeah, that's a good point, James. But you know what I was thinking? Like, okay, what if I, like, I trust Stephen. I know you come every day on set. You make sure you check the gun. So we, okay, that's your job. So, you know, we know that, okay, that's not, my job like I, I get what James was saying like it should be like each and every one responsibility to like check the gun but probably he had like this belief and I checked and it's no problem and that's a good point to make because we do trust each other if that's your job and you tell me that the gun is safe then I I now have a reason to believe that the gun is safe but also, Jacqueline, to James's point, the assistant director, Dave Holt, admitted in a statement that when Hannah gave him the gun, he said, I don't know whether he mm-hmm. invited himself, he said, I don't know why I didn't check uh, to see if yeah. there was live ammunition in the gun. Yeah. See, it went from Hannah, the weapons expert, to David, who was the assistant director, to Alec Baldwin. So Alec Baldwin is doing what you mentioned. I'm looking at two people. This gun has passed through two hands, two responsible hands, two professionals. 
One is an expert in weapons, and the other is responsible for making sure that we're all, that everybody's safe and that the film, you know, gets completed successfully. So he's probably looking at these two people and these two people with titles, major titles with major experience, that I have every reason in the world to trust. The attorney for Harvey Weinstein, his name is Arthur Idala. Arthur Idala said that Alec, Alec, and the weapons expert Hannah and David should not be charged because it's in the category of just being a horrible accident. Do you agree what? with him? Yeah, do you agree with him? No, I don't agree. And as James said, like, what, what, what are they doing with live bullets? They don't need that, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm thinking, too, is there was loss of life. And if you have an accident, and may, maybe no one meant to have an accident, you think about life, and you go, mm -hmm. oh, God, why, why didn't I check? Why did I do that? Oh, God. Except this is a big moment with somebody's life. So whenever there's mm -hmm. loss of life, somebody has to be responsible for loss of life. It's tragic. Right. Well, you're making a good point, James. And Jacqueline, you said you disagree mm -hmm. with Harvey Weinstein's attorney because other attorneys said that they should be charged under the category called negligent homicide. Negligent homicide means there should have been more care and caution exercised, and this would not have happened if there was proper care and caution exercised. Negligent homicide. That's what other attorneys ha have said. So, it, it, like you said, we don't know how it's going to play out, but it may play out that um, they do get charged. Um, and you know why I see too? Mm -hmm. This, this mm -hmm. speaks volume to the point that Whenever you work as a team, you're all responsible. Each and every one of us, like, mm -hmm. we're all responsible as a team and not just say, okay, she's responsible for this, so just leave it to that. We're all responsible to a degree whenever we work as a team. Amen. Very I good agree point. with you. That's yes. a good point. Let me give you some more information about Hannah. Hannah, the weapons expert, okay? Just two months. Before this happened, she worked on the set of a film called The Old Way, starring Nicolas Cage. Hannah would fire off rounds on the set, and Nicolas Cage would complain that she should be a, there should be at least some kind of announcement before firing a weapon because the sound was blowing out his eardrums. After finishing that movie, she moved on to Rust in Mexico. And in my own words, to me, that was carelessness. And if yep. it's her job to make sure people are kept safe, then she fails miserably. Yeah. Miserably. And it wouldn't matter what's going on around you. That's your that's your primary job. That's what you do. That's what you're paid to do. Is to keep these yep. folks safe. But you know, she was there getting paid to do that specific job, I would imagine. Mm hmm And she failed. It was a low-budget movie, they said. So they had someone else interviewed before her, but she was cheaper. She was new. So they got her because, you know, to save some bucks, and this is what happened. You know, no experience. And um, I feel that she, they should have vented her more. They should have um, uh, check, 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 you know. It was not, it's negligence. I believe this is negligence and um, a group of people should be charged. I believe so. Your wife, your loved one goes to work in an industry that you say hey, you're very happy, you know, it's kind of great to be in that industry and they wind up dead for lack yeah. of people being cautious and they were careless. That mm -hmm. is so sad. Yeah. Can't get a life back. So do you think people are, like, not valuing human life? Is that also part of it, in addition to everything else that we've been saying? Do we really value human life? Or is it just carelessness? Or is it both? I think it's both, to be honest. So yeah. do we value life? In a way, I, I think we do, but we don't think about it like that. We take it for granted. 
And I think the young lady maybe just took it for granted. Everything's fine. Yep. It's really Amen. sad. And think about war yeah. rage too. When people get in arguments and they go back yeah. to the car and get a gun. And now you yeah. wreck your life, the other person's life, families are, are, are just messed up because of a second that you decided, I, I want to kill this person. Yep. <laughs> Over That's what? Right. Because they cut you off or whatever happened or it wasn't intentional and it gets heated. You know, and I'm yep. thinking about a guy when I used to do the Easter Seals program in New Jersey is he came on in a wheelchair and he said that he regretted getting out of his car, getting into an argument with a driver mm. in California. He was wow. hot headed. He was walking back to his car and the other driver thought he was going to get a gun. So he got his gun and shot him in the back. Oh, and, man. And he's paralyzed. So oh here he is in a wheelchair. The man who shot him went to prison. So it's like, what? Where were you thinking? <laughs> oh, my God. Alec Baldwin, my heart goes out for him. He is going to need a lot of talk therapy as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we have to rely on God and hopefully his faith will help him. I believe he's going to have to pray and seek God yeah. along with Kathleen. He's hurting. Mm -hmm. The man yeah. is hurting. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. we can feel his hurt if we kind of walk in his shoes in a mm -hmm. way and wow, what would I do if I was Alec Baldwin and that happened? And no matter mm -hmm. how much money you have, mm -hmm. no matter how much success you have, it's, it's going to take God mm -hmm. to get him out of this. Yeah. Alec Baldwin cannot do anything about what happened right now. No yep. money in the world can bring the lady back. And yep. take, just if, wouldn't it be something if we could roll back time? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wouldn't it be yeah. great? Yeah. And we could say, you know, I can change what I did. I can not do that. What you're saying is so interesting, though, because i never seen this before. The police officer who had to guard Derek Chauvin uh, uh -huh. you know, to get him back and forth to the courtroom. And yeah. he wouldn't say much. He was very, you know, regimented in the way that he conducted himself, according to this guy. I forgot his name. Yeah. The guy asked him, is there anything that I can do for you? Derek Chauvin said, can you turn back time? That's what you can do for me. There you go. It was so heartless the yeah, way he killed that. George Floyd, but afterwards he would have done it differently. And that's yeah, good. It's yeah. good to know that. It's good to know that. Yeah. Yes. You know, you know and, and, and all his thing. arrogance or whatever there, he never thought that was going to happen. Mm -mm. And it only takes yeah. a moment. That bullet left that gun. Yep. Michael milliseconds. Yep. Yep. And it was yep. over. Jesus said, if you hate on people, that's like also committing murder. Mm. So, yeah. And so our words, what we say can be a, a, like a bullet to the soul. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll close it out. And I'll close it out with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you through the Son, who is the living word, and by the Holy Spirit. Pray, God, for the family of Hylena Hutchins, who have suffered such a loss and are dealing with such pain that the loss can somehow be substituted for the love and comfort that you provide in this life as they come to know you some way, somehow, through this tragedy. And for those on the other side of the unfortunate mishap, Hannah, David, and Alec, I pray that somehow, God, they would be led to salvation and or a deeper relationship with you some way, somehow, you only know. In Jesus' name, amen.